What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Infinifactory and in the last episode we had to create a new product by taking apart an old product and scrapping only the parts we needed and it was really an awesome puzzle. Today we're going to be building the mag tube corridor. Now I really hope this is like the last puzzle, the anti-javelin battery, where we have to take something apart and build something new but I'm really not sure and I'm curious. Okay, so we've got some extrusions. Okay, so I guess it's another is okay. So we're building this. What is this? This is oh, it's two different materials. Okay, there's another extruder. This is awesome. There's gonna be two extrusions and we have to cut the right products from each extrusion and form them into one piece. Okay, so what is this? This is a five by five cube five by five cube. Okay, and it's got a hole in the middle. So obviously we're going to cut the hole in the middle last. That'll just be done with some lasers and we'll just punch a hole. Because I think to build this, we're going to have to have a plus shaped sort of metal slab piece and then weld these four corner pieces on and then punch the hole. And that should be the entire product. So I'm not exactly sure how we're going to fit all this. But I mean, okay, really simply, let's just do this part first. So it'll be a row of lasers here to cut it off when it's done and it's been punched out. And then we're going to need four lasers for the corners and we need a slab of five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we need to cut here. So we'll put a laser like this and then it'll be a space of three. Another laser, space of three. And of course we'll remove all these pieces afterwards, these block pieces. Although I think someone said at one point that these blocks don't actually count towards your block score. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure someone can correct me there. And then uh, of course we'll have a sensor for this whole thing. So this sensor can just be here and that sensor should pretty much trigger everything if I'm not mistaken. I think this will work and then we just run that across and do that and uh, actually we can run that down. Okay and then of course run the sensor over to here and just like that and I'm pretty sure this will cut our okay actually we have to pull it off this way first that would be there we go that way it doesn't uh it doesn't keep triggering the sensor so I think this makes the cube should be pretty simple. I'm getting pretty good at these lasers now. All right, so we'll bring these cubes over here and we'll probably assemble them like somewhere over here, I guess. Uh, or maybe over there. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to assemble them. Maybe we actually, you know what? We'll look, bring the cubes over here. We'll assemble them somewhere here. All right, and then this side, we got to just basically separate this into chunks that are five long as well. So same deal. We can just put a laser here and do a chunk of five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then put a sensor. And that's like this one's really easy because it's just gonna chop the one and just like that and then it'll pull it off and I guess we need to stack four of them and then distribute the four so we can just put four of them there and have a piston set up and when we get four then we can distribute them to each of the four corners individually I mean this is a little bit excessive I guess there's probably a way to do it without using four pistons but I, I think this will work so this should give us our four pieces and then they'll each come off these different conveyors right and they should all be five in length I feel like timing this with that is going to be a pain yeah like look at how fast that one is it's already got a cube out and we only have two pieces here it's already got two cubes out and we only have two pieces here we are going to need a we're going to need some way to stop the cubes from stacking up together. That's It's going to be ridiculous. There's only like four cubes and we finally just got the four pieces. Okay. So obviously we're going to have a problem with the number of cubes we have. So let's just make a, a cube buffer zone really quick. And we'll just, we'll just put up a big line of blocks here and see how many cubes that stores. Right? So that stores, what, three cubes? That'll be three cubes. And then this will take that last cube off where we need it to go. And we'll drop it down into some assembly point down here. This is going to be so excessive because, you know what? Yeah, it's 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 fine. It's fine. You know what? Let's actually drop it over one. Let's have it move that way. And the cube should land somewhere on this brick. There we go. All right. So we can store even more if we need to. That's three. Now the problem is the cubes start coming quickly. But I don't know if we're going to have enough time with these pieces to we'll have to see how this is all going to work we might have to actually just have a whole timer system set up so the cubes don't keep dropping all right and i think what we'll do for this is we'll actually move this whole distribution over to that other side where the cube is getting assembled because this is just going to be a whole lot of single conveyor this is probably the most inefficient way to build this factory but anyways i've done many many inefficient builds so i'm not terribly worried about it all right we'll put this here and then this, and I don't know where the piss. I think the pistons will be out here. And here we go. 
perfect. So two of them have to drop and go down underneath and two of them have to drop and go down on top. Well, these two can drop all the way down. All right, something like that. Perfect, so that should do two of them and uh, we'll just put a line of welders just like this. We can actually put a, a gap in the middle because we don't really need that. There we go. And then the two top ones uh, have to just kind of drop on top of that position there. All right. And then this one, I think that's that's it. And then this should assemble the whole cube if we get, of course, all the timings right, which we're probably not going to here. So, the, oh, of course, this no, this is in the way of the cube. Well, that's that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Let's. I guess we got to bring this over this way find a new way to get that into position all right cube drops in see we got a huge problem with the cube the cube time we're producing cubes faster than we're producing the parts that go into the cubes i feel like the extruding rates are the exact same and that one we're extruding a strip of five for every one cube and we need four of those for every cube so we need to slow down the cube sequencer uh, and to do that we can add as many breaks as we want, but this is only really delaying the first cube. So what we really need is a blocking piston here that doesn't let any more cubes spawn as long as there's a cube in the way. All right, so I've moved this whole assembly back a little bit just to give us a little bit more room here. It was getting a little clustered up with the conveyors and you'll actually see if we spawn this through it'll actually weld the first cube no problem but then because the cube spawns so much faster it's like four to one you can see the first set gets under and we've got that first cube actually assembled correctly but this second cube and the third cube and the fourth, you see there's so much further ahead we've got this backup of cubes now so we definitely have to fix that so the assembly is working great we just need to get this piston blocking mechanism to work as well and really you know, force the uh, the cubes to sort of follow a timing sequence. But I'm not exactly sure how to do a timer with Infinifactory. I mean, unless we have like a conveyor with a block that moves around, like the conveyor moves with a block on a platform, a free floating block, maybe. So I think that's actually exactly what we need to do. I've got this little conveyor with a block set up here. So this block is not touching anything. So it'll land in free float and it's hooked up to this blocker. So every time it passes this sensor, it'll let the blocker release and we can adjust the time in between each release and the length of the release based on the length of this block and how big this conveyor loop is. So I just want to see if this works and maybe it can, okay, so it pulls that one up, right? And then it goes into position. You know, see, it's not long enough. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, let's move this over a little bit more. We're, we're going to run out of room here. So let's just build this loop, you know, over here on the flat ground even. All right, so let's try it with four here. So this is a little bit of a faster loop. We might need to lengthen this loop out. Just the time in between each one is a little bit quick. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. As long as it lets the first one through. We can fast forward here. Now it pushes it out of the way. Okay, so the timing's a little bit off. So let's actually lengthen the loop first. Just so we have more time in between each one. Again, I'm sure someone in the comments is going to tell me exactly how to do this without this massive loop system, but I mean, this is about the closest I could think of because it is a different spawn rate, I'm pretty sure. I'm 99% sure they extrude at the same rate, but you need 20 extrusions and this one you only need 5, so there's like a huge time discrepancy. And I think that's the whole point of this challenge, is they want you to solve that time discrepancy. Alright, here we go. Let's just uh, fast forward here. No, so that one gets pushed. All right, so it took a lot of experimenting and I actually had to remove the entire sort of starting section here with the blocks, but I finally figured out with this timing loop and five blocks and a blocker, we actually do get all of the stuff in sequence correctly. So we've got a four to one ratio with the extrusions to the solid cube. And if we start here, you'll see this block of five cubes will free float around on this loop. And whenever it comes in front of the sensor, it releases one of these cubes. You can see it's actually timed perfectly with that first one. And then it'll block the next one from going, which in turn blocks the rest. And you'll see it'll drop in a position. And these beam pieces will come forward. And as they come forward, you'll see it looks like this cube's going to drop. But they actually catch that cube. They'll drop underneath that cube. They'll weld into position. And you'll see this beam actually has been timed with a little bit longer of a loop to come in last. And that way it'll push the cube out of the way. So we've actually got an entire assembly here. And it looks good. 
and I think it's gonna work. It's just absolutely awesome. Here we go, perfect, look at that. And it, it looks like it's gonna, you know, not catch the cube, but it seems to be sequenced just perfectly, so every time it does catch that next cube, and, uh, you know, they never really fall out of sequence, I hope. All we need to do is the final laser assembly, and so to do that, we just need a chunk of five here, and of course, we'll put that with a sensor right here in the one corner, and we'll have that sensor trigger our laser grid, which I believe is just up like this and of course we'll have it trigger a piston as well which will push the whole thing forward and we can just have this all attached and then that'll punch a hole in the cube and then of course we just need to have it move the whole cube out this way and then hopefully move the whole cube across and into the right position over here now, hopefully we, this is timed enough that the lasers won't blast the corner out of the previous cube, but I think this is going to be good to go. So here we go. We've got the cubes dropping into position. That's all timed. It's definitely a weird timing loop. I'm sure there's a better way to do timing loops in Infinite Factory. If there is, and you know what it is, let me know in the comments down below. I mean, that was really the only thing I could think of was having some stupid free-floating piece, but it did take me a fair amount of time just playing around with how long it needed to be in order to get the right timing sequence. But here we go. Goes into position, punches the hole, Perfect. I get out of position before the next one gets there. Oh, this is going to be dicey. Oh, no, you're good. Perfect. Punches the hole. Look at that. We are making the product. This is absolutely awesome. Definitely the most difficult assembly to date. Having to sequence the stuff and time it properly was really, really quite difficult. And just getting that timing correctly, especially because if you change the cycle rate, we're at the fastest cycle rate right now, so everything's extruding as fast as possible. But if you change the cycle rate, you have to change that timing loop, and it just makes the whole thing that much more difficult. But I think we're good to go here. Six left. Look at this. This is so cool to watch now, though. I mean, this stacking cube thing is kind of ridiculous, but you know what? It works. I'm not gonna break it. How many left? Four left? Three left? I'm really curious, guys. I think footprint of 780, it's a really big footprint. 290 blocks is not a lot of blocks, I don't think, but... 780 is a massive footprint. I think we're going to be on the terrible side of the footprint. Maybe okay on the cycles. We are doing this at the fastest possible cycle rate, but we are also kind of blocking the extrusion there from, from continuing. It can't go when there's a bunch of cubes in the way. And you can see the lasers are just going crazy. And one more. Here we go. Final cube piece. Look at this. This is absolutely awesome. And boom. Yeah, look at that. Good on the cycles, right with that top group of people. And then most people, I guess, did it on the normal cycle speed. And uh, just terrible on the footprint. And actually pretty terrible on the block score too. There are definitely people with better solutions than me. I mean, you can see my scores. The cycle score is really good, but everything else is kind of terrible. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure if you do play this game and you have better scores than me, I'd love to hear how you made that timing loop. How do you make the one extrude four times slower than the other is really the big thing. I mean, there's got to be a way to do it that I just didn't think of. So there's only one puzzle left in this, the solar cell array. I'm really excited to do it. I'm not going to look at it either. I really want to see what it is. And then, of course, I think we have just this Atropos station and one other zone as well. But, of course, let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.